Thank you, John. My name is Makaya Bailey. I am an applications engineer here at Parker Lord. I have been with the company for two years now. I originally started out as a scientist and have transitioned over to the application engineering side. We're going to be discussing silicone properties from some of our silicone products offered here at Parker Lord. Today, we're going to be covering some of the comparisons of the different types of chemistries offered at our company, some of the silicone characteristics, the differences between 2K and 1K silicones, silicone materials and applications, and handling, storage, and dispensing of our silicone products. And today, if you would like to participate and join in on the conversation, you can follow us at Lord Corporation on Twitter and use the hashtag thermal management 301 to share some of your thoughts and join in on our conversation. Here at Parker, we offer over 3,000 product lines and we have more than 450,000 customers worldwide. We are located in 50 different countries and we have 290 manufacturing plants with over a thousand markets. Looking at our manufacturing locations, we can see that we're located in the US at two locations in Indiana and Pennsylvania. We have a location in Brazil, Germany, and in Asia in both Japan and China. Some of our key markets that we use for our thermal management products are in automotive. That is one of our main markets. We also have markets in energy, electronics, aerospace and defense, and multiple others. Our key products are thermal management and electronic materials, adhesives and coatings, sensing systems, electromechanical motion and vibration control, and motion and vibration control assemblies. And you can view and look at all of our products on our website at www.lord.com slash coolthermal. We are one company, but we do offer multiple chemistries. Um, those chemistries including silicones, urethanes, epoxies, and acrylics. Today, I'm going to be discussing our silicone products, which as you can see with the key at the bottom, we have legend for excellent, moderate, and poor. Our silicone products have a wide temperature range and they protect against our fragile electronics. One of the other positives about our silicones are that they are repairable and they have great electrical insulation. Comparing the three chemistries that we see here, we have silicones versus epoxies and urethanes. Our silicones are able to be heated up at high temperatures and they have excellent thermal cycle and shock performance and they produce no exotherms. In comparison to urethanes and epoxies, looking at all three, they do cure with and without heat. Silicones in comparison to our epoxies, both share low shrinkage and silicones in comparison to our urethanes, they're both flexible and good in cold um, environments. Both are reworkable and they have low chemical resistance. Now we're going to dive into some of our silicone characteristics. You're probably thinking, where are silicones used? In the normal world, we actually have multiple silicone products. Silicones are a polymer chain that are made up of a siloxane background, which just means it has a silicone, oxygen, and an R group. The R group is connected to some kind of organic group. Common uses of silicones out there are in your shampoos and conditioners. You can use them in foot insoles, as we see here. Food storage, utensils, and different containers. They're in medical devices, makeup, and even caulk solutions that you use on your bathtubs and to stop water from coming in. Silicone characteristics for our products have low thermal conductivity, low chemical reactivity, low toxicity, thermal stability, Hydrophobicity, which just means that it repels the water, does not support any microbial growth and flame retardancy. Some of the advantages of silicone materials are that they do offer broad service and temperature. So you can have low temperature ranges all the way up to high temperature ranges that you can use silicone products. They do tend to be flexible and have low stress 
They are excellent at thermal cycling and shock performance. They do not emit any exotherms. They have low shrinkage and are repairable. Some of the limitations seen with our silicone products are that they do tend to cost more. They have lower or poor adhesion, low strength compared to our epoxies, and they can be poisoned with products such as tin. They have poor chemical and solvent resistance and contamination of other product lines. Looking at our silicone TG, which is the thermal glass transition, and CTE, which is the coefficient of thermal expansion, we can see that TGs for silicones tend to be around about a negative 100 C. The TG will not be crossed during operation, which allows for the properties to be consistent over the application of the temperature range. The CTEs for silicones tends to be relatively large, and operating above the TG means that the CTE will always be large, ranging from 100 to 350 ppm or parts per million per degree Celsius. Material is often soft and compliant, so a large CTE typically isn't an issue for silicones. And they can stop moving parts, an example being rotors, if the CTE is too large. And if the CT is large, it can lead to a delamination since dimensions change drastically. Looking at our fillers, fillers are used mainly for thermal management, viscosity variances, and flowability. Fillers can have different hardnesses, and they can also have different forms. So your fillers could be more rigid, or your fillers could be very smooth. All these account into your thermal management, your viscosity variances, and how the material flows. A harder filler can increase your thermal conductivity, but it could be abrasive when you are using your dispensing equipment. There are multiple types of polymers. You're probably wondering, what is a polymer? Polymers are large molecules or macromolecules that are built of smaller units or monomers. You can have linear, branched, or network polymers. A linear polymer or a homopolymer is a long chain of identical units. As seen here, we have a methane group attached to multiple X's, which can be any chemical that you can think of, and ending with another methane group. That is an example of what a linear polymer chain may look like. They tend to form a crystalline phase. Branched is the next step off of a linear polymer unit. So when you are branching a unit, you're pretty much taking multiple linear chains and crossing them like a tree. Highly branched polymers cannot form crystalline phases. At low degrees of branching, there is some crystallinity. Um, some of the properties seen with branched include stiffness, they have higher strength, and they can be affected in crystallinity, which is a consequence of the branching. Off of branching, we have network polymers, which is a complicated three-dimensional structure. So you can think of multiple branch structures forming a three-dimensional shape, cross-linking of our network, which just means overlapping. When you have a polymer, you can start to form copolymers. Copolymers are compromised of more than one type of repeating unit. So as an example, we'll say A and B. So we have monomer A and monomer B, and they can make up different types of copolymers. An alternating copolymer is just as it states. It alternates from A to B, A to B, down your polymer chain. A random or a statistical copolymer is, as it states, random. So the order of your two monomers is at random, very sporadic. They're not in any orderly fashion. A block copolymer has multiple sections of the same monomer and then another section of the same, of a different type of monomer down your copolymer chain link. For your graph block copolymer, we start to branch off one of your monomers. So you will have a long one-sided monomer chain 
and then you branched off with a different monomer from section of your linear monomer chain. Here at Parker Lord, we do offer 1K and 2K silicones. What we mean by the K, the K is pretty much standing for component. So our 1K products or one component products tend to be moisture and heat cured. Some of the advantages seen here with our 1K products are that you have less packaging. There's no mixing needed because you are only dealing with one lone product. They tend to be cooled before application. And some of these include our greases, gels, and other adhesives. Our 2K products, our two component products, they tend to be heat cured. So we have a resin and a hardener side or A and B side. These are seen in our adhesives and they allow for multiple mix ratios by weight and volume. Silicone thermal management solutions here offered at Parker Lord include potting and encapsulation, which is when we have some of our materials that um, flow and they surround whatever piece or um, component that you are applying them to, which is the term of potting or often used encapsulation. They encapsulate the component that you are adding our product to. These are used to optimize heat dissipation with our high thermal conductivity and low viscosity. They are flowable like chocolate syrup to help with the potting and encapsulation. They do spread out heat, which means that they are thermally conductive and they tend to pr protect your components. Our gap fillers are a more viscous form of our potting and encapsulation materials. So the gap fillers do tend to have a higher viscosity in comparison to the potting and encapsulation products. And they, like the potting and encapsulation products, offer excellent thermal conductivity. They were invented as a replacement to gap pads and they are sometimes called our thermal interface materials or TIM materials, or even thermal paste. They are also designed to transfer heat between substrates, but not for structural bonding. In continuation, we also offer gels, which our gels are designed for thermal interface materials with adhesion, and they tend to be reworkable. Our gels inhibit bleed and separation and pump out. Some of the applications that our gels are used for include flip chip microprocessors, plastic pin grid arrays, ball grid arrays, and micro BGAs. Some of the disadvantages seen are that our gels are susceptible to pump out and they do not have as high thermal conductivity in comparison to the potting materials and gap fillers. Some of the advantages seen are that the material is reworkable and has a low stress and can form with thin bond lines at a thickness of about 20 to 50 micrometers. Our greases were designed for applications where thermal interface material is required and they were more so made so that they can be easily removed from a device. Our greases are thixotropic, which means that the viscosity can decrease when stress is applied. Um, just like our gels, our greases are also used with a lot of computer products. So they're used in digital signal processing chips, graphic accelerator chips, high-speed memory devices, and the list goes on. Some of the disadvantages seen with the gels are that they are susceptible to pump out and phase separation. Some of the advantages seen are that they do have high thermal conductivity, low viscosity, and there is no curing required. Next, we are going into silicone applications and products. Our silicone products can be applied to battery packs, charging systems, motors. We do use a lot of our products in electric vehicles. Our products are also used with LED light bulbs, tire pressure sensors, and computers. Some of our top selling silicone products seen here at Parker Lord include SC1200, 1500, 1600, 3500, SC3000, and SC324. 
All of these have varying different thermal conductivities and varying viscosities. For a majority of the silicone products listed up here, we see that most of them have a soft hardness um, measured with a Shore 00 of above 65, SC324 being on the harder side at 50 Shore A. The densities of the products also vary, but about three for our densities. And all the products are UL94BO rated, which means they are flame retardant. Now going into material dispensing of our silicone products. When dispensing potting and encapsulated materials, they may have to undergo agitation and degassing. Agitation of a product just means remixing either by hand, mechanical mixing, or using a paint shaker to make sure that the, the filler and all the chemistries that are used within the product are evenly distributed before you dispense the product onto your application or component. During agitation, you may introduce gas into the product, so the material may have to be degassed. An example of this would be using a potting or encapsulation material. You often have to degas after agitating the material, which just means releasing the air from the product before dispensing to allow for the proper thermal conductivity and have no impedance of air or gas on your product. Next, I'm going to discuss packaging, storing, and dispensing of our materials using an MMD unit, which is also known as meter mixed dispensing. For potting and encapsulation, packing typically is done in bulk containers um, or giant pails, and they can range from half a pint to drums, dependent on the product. For storing, storing is typically done at room temperature. You do tend to rotate the drums or containers to prevent any settling of the filler. Fillers need to be agitated using either hand mixing, paint shaker, or drum roller. For dispensing, if it is required for high volume production, an MMD unit will be used. Other products also require preheating before applying the product just so that it is easier to apply the product onto the component. And during this process, some products require recirculation of the material to prevent the filler from settling in the feed lines. Looking at the gap fillers, Packaging is done within cartridges, or you can do bulk, also dependent on the amount. Storing is also done at room temperature, and it does not require rotation or agitation because you do not want to introduce gas into the gap fillers. Dispensing tends to be done on an MMD unit as well, or using um, the cartridge, you can use a caulk gun to dispense the material. Some of the key takeaways from today are that silicones have broad temperature ranges and they can be very flexible and reworkable and they're excellent for thermal cycling and shock resistance. There are a variety of silicone materials to choose from, all dependent on whatever application that you're using them for. Any lightly or highly filled silicone materials should be agitated into gas for proper use. Silicone materials should be stored at room temperature and dispensed through an MMD unit for high volume applications. So that wraps up all that we have today to present on our silicone products. Don't forget to register for our next upcoming virtual academy session, which you can scan the QDR code seen here in the corner of your screen. The next one will be on our epoxy properties. And at this time, we're going to open it up for any questions that you have.